So how do we choose the right thermal technology for your site? Hi, I'm John LaShantz, and in today's episode of Hot Topics, we're going to be talking about just that. How do we choose the right thermal technology for your site based on its chemicals of concern, its, its geologic conditions, and the hydrogeology of the site, um, and, and other remedial objectives you may have for the, for the site. In previous episodes, uh, we have discussed the, the, what the various, uh, what the primary thermal remediation technologies are, which are thermal conduction heating, electric resistance heating, and steam enhanced extraction. So in today's uh, episode, we are going to talk about how do we distinguish between what's the right one or pick the right one. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, we don't necessarily have to choose one. We can choose two. We can choose a combination of technologies uh, to meet the combination of site conditions you may have. What are you going to pick? Hot pocket! So when we look at these technologies individually though, we start, let's start with uh, electric resistance heating. What we know about electric resistance heating is that it's a very effective technology to heat soil and water up to 100 degrees C. Once we get to 100 degrees C, we have to be careful we don't boil off the water and, and stop current flow in the subsurface. Um, but what this also tells us is that we can effectively treat uh, geologic conditions that remain moist or are below the water table. So those kinds of sites such as clay, saturated clays, sands, silts, those kinds of sites are very applicable for, for ERH. And if those sites have uh, chemicals of concern that are readily removed at 100 degrees C, for example, almost all VOCs, and even some semi-volatile compounds like naphthalene can be readily removed at 100 degrees C, ERH is going to be applicable. So maybe we should look at this as where is it challenged? And where it could be challenged is in sites where the geology and the geochemistry of the site means the resistivity of the site. So the resistivity of the soil and water is too high or too low. And there's a range that we like to see those resistivities fall in so that we can get effective heating. If we're off too far outside those ranges, it's difficult. We can design for it, but it's difficult to design and operate. And then we look at other technologies. Um, what we can also look at is thermal conduction heating. And for basically all conditions that ERH is applicable, thermal conduction heating is also applicable. Now, one of the powerful things about thermal conduction heating is that it's not dependent on the resistivity of the soil. So resistivity can vary, saturation of water can vary. It's primarily driven by thermal conduction, which is grain to grain contact and transfer of energy and heat through the soil and heat up of that soil. So it's a very robust technology. However, um, if we have a lot of water moving through either an ERH site or a thermal conduction heating site, because it's permeable, because there's a gradient, uh, sufficient gradient that we get a lot of groundwater flux, we're adding a lot of cool water to our treatment zone on, a, on an ongoing basis, which means we have to heat that water up to our target temperature, which for example, let's say is 100 degrees C. If that rate of water input is too high, we can't effectively or uniformly achieve 100 degrees C throughout the treatment zone. So in that case, what we can do is combine steam enhanced extraction with either ERH or thermal conduction heating. And we can heat the lower permeability, slow moving groundwater zones with ERH or thermal conduction heating. And we can heat the permeable zones with steam enhanced extraction. So that's how basically we would look at a site. Uh, we look at the COCs, we look at the geology, we look at the hydrogeology. And what I've been talking about here are these three technologies um, primarily focused on 100 degrees C. But some of the chemicals that we have to treat, like PCBs or PHs or PFOS or higher boiling point uh, uh, semi-volatile compounds, they require temperatures higher than 100 degrees C to effectively remove them. Now, we only have one technology that can do that, and that's thermal conduction heating. And the reason is that the heaters themselves are running at approximately 1500 degrees F. So we can achieve those temperatures in between the heaters if we tighten the spacing between the heaters a little bit and if we don't have a lot of groundwater flux through the subsurface, so we can control that. So in, re in summary, that's, those are the three technologies have and, and how they are applicable or where they're applicable and how we choose which one is the bright one for your site. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching today's episode of Hot Topics. Please check back in the future as we will be posting up additional episodes uh, with new topics. And if you have a question or a specific topic or comment that you would like to share with me, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. My email address is jlachance at cascade-env.com. Thanks for watching.